Chapter 1 Miranda In the vast expanses of the cosmos, planet Sunev awoke to the rhythm of life far earlier than Earth. This distant world, teeming with carbon-based humanoids, mirrored the Earth of the 21st century in astonishing ways. Its civilizations developed amidst similar industrial landscapes, nurtured by the planet's axial tilt, which favored agriculture, and propelled forward by comparable technological advancements and social dynamics. The fabric of Senevian society was woven with the threads of diverse religions, powerful kingdoms, enduring dynasties, and burgeoning nations, all evolving in a dance eerily reflective of Earth's own historical ballet. Amidst this backdrop of parallel evolution, the atmosphere of Sunev, thick with a kaleidoscope of colorful gases, became the stage for a mystifying encounter. From the swirling mists, an ethereal shadow took form, its presence marked by otherworldly hums that seemed to echo across the ages. An ancient figure, shrouded in the ambience of legend, materialized to deliver a message veiled in enigma. Joan, the protagonist of our tale, found herself immobilized, caught in the grip of an overwhelming familiarity. The sensation was paradoxical. Her body was static, yet her mind raced with the awareness of being transported to a realm that, while unfamiliar, evoked no fear. Indeed, it was a landscape that haunted her dreams. The figure before her, seemingly male, communicated without the movement of lips, imparting words that resonated deep within her soul. The world is not as you perceive it. You are a drop in the ocean, the figure intoned, his voice a telepathic whisper that bypassed the ears to impress directly upon the mind. Your reality is but a shadow of what truly exists. To comprehend the vastness of the universe, you must first abandon your preconceptions and embrace the possibility of the unimaginable. Startled awake from this dreamlike encounter, Joan found herself back in the comforting familiarity of her bedroom, the morning sun casting gentle beams through her open window and stirring the curtains with a soft breeze. The wizard's enigmatic message lingered in her thoughts as she pondered its meaning. It's not the way I imagine it. Shaking off the remnants of her dream, she greeted the day with enthusiasm, propelled by the anticipation of a significant discovery at her workplace. As Joan prepared to leave, her path intersected with that of Zir, her companion, in a near collision that nearly sent his coffee to the floor. Apologies and light-hearted banter exchanged, Joan's excitement could not be contained as she shared the latest development in their scientific endeavor, the analysis and decoding of radio frequencies captured by their equipment, suggesting the tantalizing possibility of first contact with an extraterrestrial civilization. Brimmed with excitement, Joan eagerly tells Zir their recent findings. We've received signals on every bandwidth we can measure. The main communication is through radio waves, and we believe that we can decode these signals into a language model to communicate with them. Nearly spitting out his coffee, Zira's eyes light up. Wait, what? Communicate with them? You're saying that there is something or someone pushing buttons on the other side like first contact with an alien civilization? Joan eagerly replies. Yes, isn't it amazing? Zyre, taken back by the magnitude of Joan's revelation, could barely conceal his astonishment. The notion of an intelligent entity on the other end of these signals, reaching out across the void of space, sparked a mix of skepticism and wonder. As Joan hurried off to join her colleagues, leaving Zir to ponder the implications of their discovery, the narrative hinted at the threshold of a groundbreaking chapter in human history. The clandestine dance of radio waves with Sunev had become an unspoken truth. Their journey threw the void morphing into a galactic dance, legible only by the keenest of technological ears as faint cosmic mutterings. Within these ghostly murmurs, Joan and her colleagues teetered on the edge of an epoch-making revelation close to unlocking a universal vernacular veiled within the chaos, on the verge of initiating mankind's first ever conversation with beings from beyond our world.
En route to the high-altitude confines of the Mount Inanna Radio Astronomy Observatory, Joan switched on her car's radio. Immediately enveloped by the now familiar interstellar static, its alien whispers interspersed with random noise. Amid this intergalactic symphony, her phone jolted to life, pulling Joan from her reverie of endless possibilities back to reality. It was Azalea, the observatory's chief astronomer and Joan's mentor. Azalea's words carried a sense of urgency. Ah, uh, Joan, you've likely noticed the surge in signal strength since last night. Joan responded, her expression one of earnest anticipation. Yes, I have. Here's the thing. Azalea continued, excitement barely contained. My father's old wartime Morse code transcriber, Jessup and I have been analyzing the intervals between signals, and it appears to be their method of communication. Wow, Azalea, that's groundbreaking. The Sun of Science Prize is within reach, exclaimed Joan, her enthusiasm palpable. Just drive safely and head straight for the auditorium when you arrive. We need to brief the team, and Joan, let's keep this under wraps until we've fully vetted our findings. I want everyone's fresh insights on the table. Azalea advised her. Joan muted the radio, lost once more in thoughts of discovery, her heart pounding with anticipation. The observatory's auditorium was abuzz with energy as the staff convened. The air crackled with anticipation as Joan was approached by a colleague before finding her seat. Joan initiated the conversation, her eyes wide with wonder. Can you believe this? It's beyond belief. Her colleague Bennu replied, a sense of awe in his voice. To think we're the ones making this leap after so many have tried, it's surreal. Exactly. Joan agreed, her gaze sweeping over familiar faces. It's like a reunion of minds, all drawn here by the gravity of this moment. Their exchange was cut short as Azalea made her way to the stage, the murmurs of the crowd subsiding. If I could have everyone's attention, please. She began her voice firm yet filled with the promise of the unknown as everyone settled, poised on the cusp of history. Good morning, team. We are gathered here today because we are a witness to history, and with a sense of exactment and heavy anticipation, we have a role in the developing situation with the radio signals, and I can now confidently say that we know they are coming from the Uranus moon Miranda. As you know, over the past few weeks, the signals have increased in intensity. Our observatory has consistently pressed the boundaries in space communication, and now all of the one-way signals are turning into communication. This is quite a leap, and our hard work and dedication is demanding that we are steadfast in our approach, careful to display our utmost professionalism and scientific rigor. As this develops and more information is collected, I want everyone to understand that we are an information hub, and our territory manager has already spoken with me about bringing representative to assist us in case of an escalation dealing with in public affairs between us and the general population. Let's continue to push the boundaries of our own understanding. There will be many moving pieces over the next couple of weeks, and I want everyone to be on board. Miranda has captivated our imagination with its rigid landscape and fractured surface. Now we search for more answers. We will have a chance to showcase our results to the world and our mission, although always at the edge, we'll now be out in front of the public. As we unweave the signals, I'm sure we will discover the secrets the moon has to share. This is a unique opportunity to unlock the secrets of life in our solar system. We each have a responsibility to leave no questions unanswered and no stones left unturned. Following Azalea's address, she projected an image onto the screen presenting a set of strategic objectives without verbalizing them. These priorities will shape our approach to the breakthrough, she explained. Discuss these in greater detail with your supervisors after this meeting. Our quest for knowledge ignites our wonder and drives us forward. As we delve into the mysteries unveiled on Miranda, view this as a chance to deepen our scientific understanding and mastery. Our commitment will stand as a beacon inspiring in ways we've yet to comprehend. Ensure your findings are accurate and communicated through the correct channels. I look forward to reviewing your contributions. Let's not forget our core mission. Maintain your scheduled commitments, yet if your work on Miranda necessitates a change, inform your supervisor. 
Adjustments may be needed to prioritize this endeavor within your teams. I have every confidence in our collective ability to excel and potentially redefine our grasp of the universe. Stay inquisitive, meticulous, and remember, we are the stewards of this journey. Every step we take is ours to decide. I appreciate your steadfast dedication. Lastly, I request the radio astronomy team to join me in the conference room. Thank you, everyone. It's time to get to work. Motivated by Azalea's words, the team dispersed from the auditorium with a renewed vigor. The atmosphere was charged with anticipation. Everyone was acutely aware that their research was on the cusp of an unprecedented shift. There was a collective eagerness to pioneer new discoveries, with each member applying their unique expertise to theorize about the signals and unravel the mysteries of their latest findings. This is the end of chapter one. Here is a recap from this chapter. The story unfolds on planet Sunev, mirroring Earth's 21st century civilization with carbon-based humanoids and similar technological, social, and agricultural advancements. The narrative begins with a dream encounter between the protagonist, Joan, and a mystical figure, leading to a realization about perception and reality. Joan, filled with excitement about a breakthrough in her work, discusses with her colleague Zaya the decoding of radio frequencies believed to be extraterrestrial communications. This discovery suggests the potential for first contact with an alien civilization. Joan heads to the observatory, where she and her team have been monitoring signals from Uranus's moon, Miranda. The intensity of these signals has increased, and a theory emerges that they communicate through patterns resembling Morse code. This leads to a significant meeting at the observatory, where Azalea, the supervisor, announces the signal's origin from Miranda, emphasizing the historical significance of this moment and the team's role in deciphering the communications. Azalea's speech to the assembled staff highlights the importance of professionalism, scientific rigor, and the potential for public interest and involvement. She sets out key priorities for handling this groundbreaking discovery, urging the team to maintain their dedication to uncovering the secrets of Miranda and, by extension, life in the solar system.